the Association of the Abnormality Amateurs. Overview The Association of the Abnormality Amateurs, abbreviated AAA in the rest of the document, is a small organization of no more than 20 members, or unknown with the exception of a certain Gierke, who used their relatively limited knowledge of the anomalous to assemble and create singular artifacts for their own use or to offer these to the Foundation. These anomalous artifacts are mostly unstable, tend to explode easily, and are unreliable at best. In addition, they are composed of salvage or poor quality materials, leading to their precarious structure and random nature. It is therefore advisable to be very careful when discovering, handling, or studying these anomalous artifacts, as the multiple design flaws make them unpredictable most of the time. However, once these gaps are corrected, when possible, these artifacts can be surprisingly useful. Some of these are being further studied to determine whether they can be replicated in sufficient quantities to equip some departments. The complete list is available upon request from Dr. McKissett, the current head of the research about this group of interests. The items are usually accompanied by a letter vaguely describing the effects in a pseudoscientific language largely inspired by popular science fiction works, making their interpretation extremely hazardous. It is also often mentioned the desire of this organization to help the SCP Foundation by providing little things that could make your life easier. The reasons behind this are currently unknown. A lack of mention from other groups of interest, as well as the naivete about the Foundation's monopoly on the anomalous world scene, seems to point to a total ignorance of other organizations in this field. No Foundation sites have reported receiving anomalous artifacts or letters from the AAA outside of metropolitan France. The African Office of Occult Affairs Overview Created by Louis-Philippe I in 1830, during the few months that followed the Elgar Siege, the African Office of Occult Affairs, the AOOA, was a government organization in charge of collecting, managing, studying, and exploiting the anomalous in France's African colonies. Officially dependent on the Ministry of Occult Affairs, then on the estate Noir, the AOOA actually acted almost autonomously and had important military and scientific resources at their disposal compared to other branches of the French occult administration. The AOOA's doctrine was based on the absolute defense of the French paranormal interests in Africa. Thus, it engaged in an unbridled competition against other national or private groups of interest present on the continent including the SCP Foundation. It was not rare for these conflicts of interest to degenerate until they endangered the diplomatic relations of France and the Ministry of Occult Affairs, or even the security of civilian populations the AOA was supposed to protect through its actions. The AOA was at its peak during the interwar period. It was during this period that the administration of the office made the greatest use of troops from the French occult regiment or the colonial Grand Estray to achieve its goals. As the main anonymous organization of Free France, it actively participated in the resistance after the defeat of 1940 and in the liberation of the metropolis within the occult allied coalition. The African Office of Occult Affairs was definitely dissolved in 1962, following Algeria gaining independence, its resources were recovered by the Estate Noir or sold to other organizations such as the SCP Foundation or Marshall Carter and Dark Limited. Some of its members are also recruited by the Foundation, the Missionary Organization Primordial, the GOC or the Chaos Insurgency. The French National Gendrustry Overview, paranormal counterpart of the National Gendarmerie. The Gendarmerie 
is a secret armed force operating under the authority of the Ministry of Internal Affairs, in charge of protecting the population and dissimulating anomalies in the French territory, formed during the infamous Affair Dogong Destre in 1844. The Gang Destre played a repressive role which, combined with the military scientific role of the Singular Imperial Academy, ensured the monopoly of the French state on abnormal affairs. So finally the end of the empire, the Gondestri became a respected institution of the Republic, dedicated to safeguarding France from the most unthinkable threats. After a golden age in the Belle de Book and a dark age under Fiji France, the Gondestri entered during the second half of the 20th century in an increasingly marked decline. Unable to adapt to the evolution of paracriminality and competing with the opening of France to international organizations such as the Foundation, in the early 21st century, its outdated equipment, overstretched staff, and budgetary restraint made the Gengostre quite inefficient and gangsters are now limited in fighting against power delinquency and possible investigative work in cases that do not comply with conventional fiscal laws. However, the organization maintains close collaboration with the Mavalut, the Gapen, and Estate Noir, the French government division in charge of the conservation of esoteric artifacts. Although the relationship between the Gondestry and the SCP Foundation has been very different in the past, the two organizations are now on relatively good terms. Even though Foundation officers still frequently encounter difficulties in working with the more chauvinistic members of the French law enforcement. The Humanist Gentleman Overview The Humanist Gentleman commonly referred to as gentlemen, take root in a humanist organization of the second half of the 18th century, created by John Petit Ravoon, the Corville, and the Baron Jorbock. The aim of this organization has always been to improve the human condition through abnormalities and to reach the ideal of the better man. Third gentlemen see abnormalities as a natural process to which mankind has to get used to, and thus formed the Neo-Enlightenment movement. The humanist gentlemen are currently present in Western Europe, but mostly in France. The gentlemen strongly denounce the destruction of SCP objects, as well as the containment of harmless anomalies, in addition to the fight for the fundamental rights of anomalous individuals. The gentlemen's activities mostly revolved around research and creation of anomalies that could improve the human condition. Mobile Task Force Tau 3, the King's Regiment, was created in order to efficiently fight against these anomalies and arrest their creators. Nevertheless, the gentlemen are very discreet on the anomalous international scene, even though they seem extremely active on the underground anomalous stage, and gathering intelligence on the way their organization works proves to be difficult. The gentlemen are not hostile to the Foundation and have shown respect towards its achievements, but claim to be ideologically irreconcilable. Moreover, they have successfully infiltrated the French branch on several occasions, but always by convincing one of its employees to work with them. Any individual suspected to be part of or to work with the gentlemen is to be apprehended for further interrogation. Nemo and Anoculus Overview Nemo and Anoculus is a group claiming to be openly hostile to the Foundation and its interests, but possesses limited resources and staff. This handicap tends to limit its offensive capabilities, but its attacks are often very calculated, based on a broad knowledge of the Foundation containment methods, and generally making more or less supported references to the book 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. 
These attacks most often take the form of info hazards or memetic objects specifically and explicitly designed to damage the foundation, and conceived by the perpetrators in such a way that they cannot be contained or neutralized by conventional methods, or cannot or should not be manipulated by individuals working knowingly for the SCP Foundation. The founder individual of the group, presenting themselves as Nemo, was originally an employee of the Foundation, but details about them are closely linked to a series of incidents that took place between 1980 and 2011, and whose records are currently classified as an attempt to dissolve the Foundation from within. It is currently unknown who is at the head of Nemo and the Noctilus, or even if it is one or more people. One thing is certain, the group's attacks on the Foundation are more brazen but of more limited ambition and are generally aimed at revealing the Foundation's existence to the general public rather than simply destroying it. Any trace of activity by Nemo and the Noctilus must be immediately reported to a level 4 staff member with Octopus accreditation so that they can take appropriate measures involve the mobile task force and initially the application of the Octopus Protocol. The Order of Light The Order of Light seems to be an angel of death which tempts humanity by presenting it with the apple of immortality. Its appearance worries us, its intentions obscure, and its promises seduce us. So we resolutely plunge our gaze into it, trying in vain to understand its schemes, and we succumb to it, because of all the abysses we know. None seem brighter to us than the one we saw there. Overview The Order of Light presents itself as an ultra-religion, devoting unfailing adoration to all forms of normal and supernatural life and aspires to transcend all physical and ideological distinctions in order to unite all beings inhabiting the earth under its sole banner. If its ancient existence as an esoteric counterpart of the legendary Order of the Temple is certain, it is assumed that its origins are much older still. The Order of Light has currently emerged from the shadows of occult organizations and shows a disturbing willingness to massively recruit new followers who until now seem to be approached only by initiate in the greatest secrecy. While this organization is suspected of having infiltrated all levels of society and most political and religious decision-making spheres in the Western and Eastern world, the Order of Light which claims to be peaceful and philanthropic, has never sought to oppose or interfere with the Foundation or any other group of interest. The organization never appears to have been involved in any crime, offense or scandal, thus legitimizing its existence on the world scene and all the more seducing the population by its apparent purity. Any contact with its members is strictly forbidden because of the alienation practices and a crucial lack of information about the Order's motivations. Any individual suspected of being a member of the Order must be immediately reported to MTF Omega-1, Order of Holiness. Primordial Overview Initially a simple group of mercenaries like so many others, Primordial evolved into a major player in its field following the arrival of SCP-194-FRF, also known as Entrain Timeless, at its head, which marked the beginning of Primordial's policy of interference in the affairs of its competitors. Primordial arbitrated several conflicts between major mercenary organizations, resulting in a growing influence far greater than that of other groups. The combination of this newly acquired authority was undoubtedly the signing of the Casablanca Agreement in 1950, by which Primordial imposed on the abnormal mercenary system a strict code of ethics that it continues to apply and enforce today. 
maintaining the secrecy surrounding the existence of the abnormal, establishing elementary moral and ethical principles, accepting the abnormal, common policy aimed at preserving the environment from internal and external threats. Since the disappearance of SCP-194-FRF in the 1960s, Primordial has been led by the primates, whose exact number is unknown, and are the main contact of the SCP Foundation within the mercenary movement. The two organizations have also established a form of cooperation. Through the delivery of abnormal objects and individuals by Primordial to the Foundation. Nevertheless, Primordial cannot be considered as a trustworthy interlocutor in general, as it does not hide from serving its own interests above all else. Society of Atheists for the Protection from the Perilous and Hindering Institutionalized Religions Everywhere. Sapphire. Overview. The Society of Atheists for the Protection from the Perilous and Hindering Institutionalized Religions Everywhere, more commonly known under its acronym, Sapphire, is a group of extremist asetoic atheists. Largely present in Europe, its adherents are, for the most part, members of the scientific community belonging to an international network that is difficult to discern. These people see SCP objects, which they call singularities, as a threat to scientific thinking and rationalism, thus encouraging superstition and religious obscurantism. Their policy varies between the systematic destruction of SCP objects and their use as weapons to perpetrate acts of terrorism against religion, global or more, aimed at certain objectives. Surfire's attacks mainly involved large masses of civilians without any attempt at discretion. This forces the foundation, this forces the foundation to deploy extreme dissimulation protocols after every strike. Mobile Task Force Omega-5, the jewelers, had been created with the specific purpose of tracking, preventing, or in case of failure, camouflaging their attacks. Sapphire is in constant conflict with any and all forms of the occult, may they be normal or paranormal. Having numerous contacts in the scientific world, some Foundation researchers have been discovered as undercover affiliates of the group, even if Sapphire generally respects the Foundation and its objectives. The group disapproves of the Foundation's conservation policy in regards to SCP objects, and some spies have already been captured after having tried to destroy or otherwise recover contained SCPs for their own personal interests. Each and every undercover agent of Sapphire must be reported, captured, and interrogated regarding the inner workings of the society and their future attacks. Universe Island Kingdom Overview The Universe Island Kingdom is an anomalous civilization established on a floating island in an extra-dimensional reality that appears to be completely empty sky. The inhabitants, the Islands, are ruled by King Marian II, who reigns over the seven dukedoms constituting the territory of the kingdom from its chief town, Senator. Noticed by the SCP Foundation at the beginning of the 20th century, following the numerous appearances of its explorers on Earth, the kingdom was discovered to have existed, in fact, since the beginning of the 18th century. The group of interest had its origins in the town of Singuren in Savary, where, in the 1720s, its inhabitants discovered cracks in the sky leading to Universe Island. They then started to build towers to join them and colonize the island in order to found a new city due to the numerous resources that abounded there. Realizing quickly that the place was anomalous, the members of the Catholic Church on site were hostile to the construction project. Esoteric factions of the Church sent their troops to Sengren in order to destroy the towers and thus confine the inhabitants within Universe Island. 
all traces of the city's existence were removed by the Catholic Church shortly after these events. To survive in Inverness Island, the former inhabitants of St. Green had to learn how to use and control the anomalous resources that surrounded them. Freed from the constraints of the old world, they named a king and built a kingdom. This extra dimensional isolation forced the Arlenes to live in an entirely anomalous based society. New inventions, currents of thought, and religions such as the Church of the Heavenly Vault emerged there. At the beginning of the 20th century, a group of Arlenes developed a portal technology allowing travel between Universe Island and the Earth. As a result, Marion II and his advisors set up many means to, to inculcate to the Arlenes a feeling of superiority with regard to the Wordians, their word for us, and to foresee future conquests of the Earth. In reaction to the king's decisions, a movement advocating peace with the Earth was created, the Nunes Leadism. Nowadays, the Foundation manages to limit the dimensional exchanges between the Earth and Inverus Island. A collaboration has been established with Unisys Arlenes. Any non Unisys Arlenes found on Earth must be captured, interrogated, and eliminated.